Hey. Hey, Ken. Hey, hey, Glenn. What's going decided, on? Decided not to come down to the office today, huh? I had some stuff to do back at home, and so I'm working at home today. It's a it's a W A H D, I guess. Work at home day. Work at home is cool. Um, yes. Yeah, so where are you right now? Are you you're in your um, your house? I'm in my house. I tried to sit out on the patio, but the Wi-Fi signal wasn't strong enough out there, and the Skype call started to break up, so I moved inside. But it is a gorgeous day here in Amesbury, Massachusetts. Uh, we are having some summer weather in, in New England here, it even though nice. autumn has started. It's really nice, yeah, it, and, it's a, and it's a great opportunity to do a little Q&A. What do you think of that? Yeah, this is our second episode of monthly Q&A with Ken and Glenn. Uh, if you don't know who we are, we are the founders of Ecamm Network. Me and my twin brother Glenn founded Ecamm 20 years ago, and we are just a 100% Mac-focused fo company. We make Mac apps. Um, do we have any uh, questions that we want to kick it off with, Glenn? Yeah, um, we, got, we got a few questions in on um, both on the email and the um, the post announcement had some comments on there. I'm just putting you up on the screen here so I can, there you are, so now I can look at you. Um, so Ecamm Live version 3.2 has been really successful so far. Uh, we did do a couple point releases to fix some minor issues, but really has been going quite well. Um, the beta team did a really good job stomping out any issues that, that might have come up. Um, but we, we, did, we, had, we had a couple questions about using some of the features. Um, specifically, we had, a, we had a request to show, um, to just do kind of like a walkthrough of how to set up the green screen feature. So I thought oh. we could do that today. Well, I've got a green wall behind me, but... It's, it's, it's kind of green. Yeah. More like a gray green. But I'm not actually in Ecamm Live right now. I'm just in Skype, so... Yeah, but I, that is a feature, though. Like, you can actually green screen your Skype guest in Ecamm Live. So really? if you have guests coming in, oh yeah, they show up since they show up as okay. a camera source. You can I can actually apply a green screen to you. I can try. See if it'll see if this is green enough. I don't think your wall is green enough. Try though. And uh, yeah. No. You need to be much greener. <laughs> it's not happening. What happened? Um it's just it's just not green enough. Mm. Anyway, so um, it, 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 there was that. We also, um, Eileen was asking about hotkeys. What cool sort of secret hidden hotkeys can we show people to make your life a lot easier and make you into an Ecamm Live master? So we could go over some of those hotkeys. And uh, what, el what else did we have, Katie, that people were asking about? Anything else? Um, Jason's asking, Jason, this is our first actual live question here. Jason's asking if we're in two different cities. Um, they're more like towns around <laughs> here in Massachusetts. Um, cities are basically just larger towns, right? Um, Kent and Ans the city of Amesbury. It's and official, I'm the, yeah. I'm in the town of North Andover. So we're about 30 minutes from each other. The, uh, the, so so uh, what do you think, Ken? Why don't we, do, and, and since, we're, since Ken is Skyping in, we also thought we could do like a little demo of how to bring in a Skype guest because we get a lot of questions about this. Um, we made this fairly um, automatic, but it still has a lot of moving parts when you bring in a Skype guest. And um, it is it's sometimes a challenge to get them all, you know, working in unison. So we thought we could go over that a little bit, using Ken so, as kind of like a guinea pig. And I think uh, the, fir the first thing we should mention about that is that um, Skype is a little bit of a CPU vampire. So um, we actually don't recommend doing Skype interviews with Ecamm Live from a really, uh, either a really, really old Mac or a really low-end Mac. Um, Glenn's on a really nice MacBook Pro. He has no trouble doing Skype interviews, and neither will you if you're on a, if you're on a fast Mac. Um, if you're, uh, Ecamm Live supports all manner of Macs, but when you bring that, when you bring that Skype call into the picture, and you look at your CPU usage monitor, you can sometimes you're like, oh my god, Skype, what are you doing? Like, 
mining Bitcoin or something in the background? Like, how could you be using so much CPU? So, yeah, um, so, yeah but um, so, so one of the things we're thinking about is, is, add, is um, working on, um, we've had a lot of requests for kind of like a minimum recommended Mac. So when you're going out buying a new Mac, kind of a buyer's guide, like what are you going to be doing with Ecamm Live? What kind of Mac do you need? We don't have anything like that right now, but the general rule of thumb is your Mac should be about this thick. <laughs> get out if the it's ruler any thinner you may have trouble you're gonna be uh you're gonna be in trouble to, to the macbook airs are just not not cutting it especially for bringing in a Skype well, guest they're okay for most things there are certain things that are extremely cpu intensive um screen sharing running a 4k camera um skyping uh other yeah. things are, are probably okay so so but so so with that out of the way, um, we could just kind of walk through um, bringing you on, pretend like we didn't have you on here, and then kind of bring you on. What do you think of that idea? Okay, so you, you want to just start with making this keep me on the Skype call, or um, I can kick you off and then bring you back on in a few minutes. What do you think of that? Or I can keep you and keep you on, and then we don't have to like call you back up and stuff again. So All right, so pretend like pretend like okay. you just made a Skype call. So let me go into um, let me go into live demo mode here, so I can show you guys what this looks like. Okay, so here's my here's my um, eCam live interface. Now you're basically seeing exactly what I'm seeing on the screen, and you can see that this interface. I mean, I, I recently just like completely cleared my eCam live preps because I was troubleshooting something. Um, so this is basically almost exactly what it looks like when you open Ecamm Live for the first time. I, I haven't even really moved any of the windows around or anything. But I have set up these four scenes. This is kind of critical to any sort of successful Skype interview, that you have your scenes set up in advance. And there's just four of them here. There's an intro, and this is like that, that a scene, there's, a, there's me, and then there's my guest. And then there's both of us side by side. Those are the four basic scenes that you'd want to have um, set up if you're bringing a guest on. So um, setting up those scenes in advance is, a, is a, an important first step. And then I also have set up those scenes on my stream deck so that if I wanted to change my, my scene um, with my buttons here, I can just, you can't see what I'm doing here, but I can kind of move through the scenes um, using the stream deck buttons if I wanted to. So um, once you have that set up, um, the first very important step is getting the other person on Skype. And you want to call them well in advance, make sure that they have um, a nice internet connection. We did not do, Ken, Ken and I did not do that. Um, and we found out he couldn't be on his patio because it was the internet connection was just too weak. So we um, make sure you have a nice Skype call. So you can see here I have Skype open and I have, I have Ken on the call. And you can see this message here, stop NDI. Now, NDI is the linkage between Skype and Ecamm Live. NDI is, is that sort of magic that glues the two apps together. How do you turn that on? You go into your Skype preferences, go into calling, and then you'll see advanced, and then allow NDI usage. And it's just a switch. And once you turn this on, it will stay on um, for good, and people, and and once that's on, you'll see this little message show up at the top of calls. And the other person can see that message too, saying like, this person is using a device that could be recording or broadcasting your call. So that's to keep Skype's lawyers happy, basically. But what that means is now, I'm gonna minimize Skype to get out of the way. And now here in Ecamm Live, if I look on the camera menu, there's Ken, that's his Skype screen name there. So he comes in as a camera just like any other sort of camera source you've plugged in, now Ken is part of the call. In addition to that, if I look in my sound level window, I have a new little row here. Um, hello, say, hello. So say stuff, Ken. Hello there. So you want to look there and make sure that when the other person talks, that little green line um, right there, say something. Hello there. I am on Skype. Yeah, so that line should be moving for him and this top arrow should be moving from me. And you and the reason I'm wearing this earbud 
is so the wearing... Ken's voice is not feeding back into my microphone. So if I was not wearing this and I was just relying on my computer speakers or something and Ken talked, it's going to come out of Skype. It's going to come into the broadcast, but it's also going to come out on my computer speakers into my microphone. And it's also going to get picked up by my mic. So you're going to end up with a little bit of like, a, I wouldn't call it an echo, more of like a reverberation. Like you're going to hear Ken's voice a little bit um, funky. It's hard to describe, kind of a little bit of a um, double. People, double people describe voice. it as like being underwater, sounding underwater. Yeah, so, if you, if, so, so that, that, getting that audio figured out, if they know, all you really have to do to solve this is to wear something, um, some sort of a headset device that is going to um, isolate the audio on both sides. And another, um, and notice I'm not using my built-in mic, I'm using the microphone on this, just because I was in a little bit of a rush, but normally I would plug in like a USB microphone or something like that. So, so now we're on. We've got our four scenes. We're, we've got our four scenes um, set up. Do you want to show how you set up the split screen scene and stuff? Yeah. So say I did pretend. Yeah, that's not a really good demo because we already had it set up. But say say I had a brand new scene. Okay, I just opened Ecamm Live for the first time. You can see my beautiful green background. Um, I'll go over here to green screen, turn on my image, and there. Okay, now I'm green screened in. And now I want to add in Ken. So you can see my camera switcher here at the bottom, um, this little plus button here. I'm gonna hit that plus button saying, I wanna add in Ken. And now we're split screen. Cool. So that's it. What if you wanted and to reverse, reverse the sides and put me on the left and you on the right? So there's an option for that in this little gear menu, swap cameras, and that will swap your, your split screen. And to Eileen's question about hotkeys, command, Option S. Ken Glenn, Glenn, Ken, Glenn, Ken, Ken, Glenn, Ken, Glenn, Ken, 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 Glenn. Um, so that's going to switch. Um, command option S will switch your cameras automatically. All right, so now we are, we're in business. We have our new split screen scene. I could call it split screen. And we're golden. I could add some titles. Ken and Glenn. And those will get saved in the scene for later when you're when you're doing your broadcast. So that is um, the main um, series of steps for setting this up. Um, there's one other thing I could show you, which is the virtual camera. Now, if you have Ecamm Live Pro, you have this really cool feature called virtual camera. You turn it on up here on the outputs menu. All you have to say is virtual camera on, and then you'll get this little symbol here telling you that virtual camera is on. What that means is the signal from Ecamm Live, the video signal is getting, um, is showing, gonna show up as a camera source in, your, in a lot of your Mac apps. So if I go into Skype settings, audio or video, you can see right now, what Ken's seeing is the, the built-in camera video, which is just not super useful. But if I now pick Ecamm Live virtual camera here, Ken now sees the broadcast. So he can see um, who's on camera, essentially. Oh, cool. Isn't that neat? There's a little bit of a delay. It's a little bit disconcerting by the time it gets out of Ecamm into Skype, over to me, and back. Um, but it is cool to be able to see what Glenn is currently showing. So I, so I know whether I'm actually on camera at the moment. The moment he switches to the one shot of himself, that's when I can like scratch my face or like take a drink of water. Okay, so I'm just on camera now. Ken, and I'm like, Ken oh, is just seeing now me I, now. Now I can like. And now he's seeing that split screen. So, very um, virtual cameras is very useful for that kind of thing, especially if if you want your guest, you, you and your guest to be like, um, you know, kind of looking at the same thing or or seeing the um, like if I bring a comment on the screen right now, like um, you see the comments here. Here's Brian making a comment. So now Ken can see that in the virtual camera. And we, if this was a Q, like, since it's a Q&A, you know, we could both look at the question and discuss it. Nice. And so while we're still talking about Skype interview, um, it's worth mentioning that you can bring on more than one guest. And it's kind of automatic. If, you, if we were doing a three-way Skype video call, the, 
the, the third guest would simply appear as a another camera source, and clicking that plus button would bring in a third a third person. Um, we don't have any examples of that right now because it's only a, a two-way Skype call, yeah, but I it's call just as phone. easy. <laughs> I could add in my phone. Okay, we're going off script. So We have a script? I didn't have a script. I go back to my live demo mode. Mine. How do I go? I thought I knew the key command for that. It is Apple Shift D. Boom. Okay, now you can see my screen again. All right, so I'm going to bring my Skype back up. Um, this is a quite a, oops, open the wrong program. Um, bring my Skype back up. This is a, how do you add someone in Skype? Skype somehow made this complicated at one point, but they made it a little easier now. You got this little guy with a plus button. I will um, find my other. Oh, I think I said it to some like random. I don't speak Chinese, but we were just testing Chinese symbols. So I said it, the chat, some Chinese symbols of someone's name. Okay, calling me. I hope that doesn't say anything weird in Chinese. I think it's, it's just someone's, someone's name. name. Okay, I'm gonna mute this so it's not crazy. Okay, so now we're in a three-way Skype call. If someone does answer on their phone, you want them to turn their phone so it's like regular camera shaped. Oh god, how do I mute this? <laughs> I can mute like the mic, but not the um, speaker. Turn the volume down, Will. It doesn't let me go all the way down. That's fine now. I'm just not going to talk. Um, but anyway, so now I have two, two people on Skype. And you can see um, I'm a camera source now. And I'll plus it in. And now hey. I have a split screen. You got to fix those titles, though. So that's pretty easy. And if the other person actually were just to call you, I'm going to hang this up now. It's annoying. If the other call, if the person were to call you during the call, um, Skype now gives you that sort of standard like, oh, you have an incoming call. Would you like to merge it in with your current call? Kind of like you're used to seeing on your phone. So um, pretty straightforward there too. Um, okay, so that's that's Skype. Um, we also had a request to um, we had some questions about how to set up green screen. Um, so we could we want to want want to take a look at that. Shall yeah. We? Go to town. Um, a live question coming in from um, from Marina, asking what the res of video is when you stream to Facebook. Uh, unfortunately, 720. That's an easy question. Um, apparently, they've enabled some people to have 1080, some gamers and stuff. But um, most people just just um, have a max of 720 on Facebook. Are we live to uh, YouTube and Facebook right now? Yeah, today we're restreaming. We're using Restream to go out to both our Facebook page and our YouTube page. And YouTube is going in at 10. So we're, we're actually streaming at 1080. You can pick any resolution you want, basically, in Ecamm Live. If you, um, I still have this um, dem live demo mode. If you look at um, the stream sizes, we give a lot of options all the way up to 4K. And you can pick any, any of those options that you want um, and send it to Facebook. Facebook is pretty, pretty easy going about it. But unfortunately, they will transcode that and just stream it out to everyone in 720 max. All right, so green screen. Um, you might have noticed when I make a new scene here, um, it's just um, my green background. And this is this is an Elgato um, folding green screen here that I have behind me. And um, I'll just take you quickly through setting this up. Just kind of like the Skype settings, it's it's um, there isn't a lot to set up, but it can be a little tricky at first. First and foremost, you do need a green screen. Um, there are, I know there are apps up there that will automatically replace your background, but this is not one of them. You need a solid green screen behind you, and it should be, um, it shouldn't be like wrinkly because that just looks bad, and it should be fairly consistently lit. Um, if it's like darker on one side than the other, you're going to have trouble with your adjustments. 
Uh, once you are on camera with your green screen, you're going to want to just um, use these camera effects settings. So if you don't see if you don't see camera effects, I can. If you don't see camera effects, you can get, click this little this little magic wand icon here, and mm, that will hide and wand. show your camera effects window. And then you want to pick. Since I have both Ken and I punched up, it's asking me which camera do I want to set up the green screen for. I'll pick my cam link. Turn on green screen. Now at first there's no image pick, so that did absolutely nothing. But once you pick an image, we have our four presets, which I'm totally sick of. We need to get better presets. Or you can bring in an image from the internet. I'll just pick my office again. And that's it. Now I'm green screened in, and it's specific to this scene. So if I were to copy this scene, I'll duplicate this scene, and then I'll get, put myself in the castle. Now if I switch back and forth, in this one, I'm in the library. In this one, I'm in the parlor. So you can see how that is specific to the scene itself. The fade level here is the other step. So you might take a look at yourself and say, like, well, I look OK, but I have like um, some fuzziness over on the side, or maybe I'm missing part of my head. Um, you want to adjust this fade level so that um, Usually the rule of thumb I use is you want to just move it until your hair stops sparkling. Because that spark, if there's any sort of sparkling going on um, on you, that's going to be really distracting. Our green screen is pretty good about keeping it from getting all green and fringy. Um, you typically, in our green screen implementation, like a lot of other um, apps that I will not name, when you use green screen, um, you get kind of this like ring around you, like a kind of a green fringe. Um, our app doesn't tend to do that, but you can still end up with a little bit of like a sparkle depending on your hair or your lighting. Um, I'm, I can't get it to sparkle because we have a lot of light coming in. But you want to just make sure that sparkle doesn't come in. And um, depending on your hairdo, um, you can actually kind of err on the side of like removing some of your hair. Like look at my hair in real life. It's kind of like like going out to the sides a little bit. Um, and then my green screen settings, I can kind of like adjust it so that it is chopping off like a little bit of flyaway hair, but that, that's not necessarily bad because nobody really knows what, what your hair looks like in real life. Um, that doesn't work with all hairstyles, but that's what I tend to do. So rather than having like a little weird sparkly area that the green screen's not handling very well, where's Ken? Um, I'll just have it chop off a little bit of my, my flyaway hair and it looks pretty good. So some obvious tips for green screen. Um, don't wear green. Um, if you uh, are wearing green, obviously it will get replaced by the background. Um, light yourself well. But it's not, our implementation is really, works really well. You don't need studio quality lights or anything. Glenn's just sitting in a window. Um, and uh, there are a few other options there in that panel that we should, we should point out. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm still sharing my screen, aren't I? I always forget. Um, so the other, there's a couple other options. There's a there's a blur checkbox. I don't know how popular this is, but um, some images you might want not want the detail to show through. You might just want it to look like a depth of field effect. So you can have your background blurry, like that. Um, another, and then this other um, button here. Ken talked about in our last video, um, the mask edges button. So that is um, something that's useful if your green screen is not filling your entire shot, or if there's some sort of object in the shot that you want to mask out. So I can kind of do, I can show you an example of, um, like, let's say I had this microphone in the kind of in the shot. So you'd never want your mic that low, but um, so I just move this microphone into the shot. Um, this mask edges button will use artificial intelligence to look for objects along the edges of the screen and mask them out. So let's see if this works. I'll just click mask edges. Oh, and the mic is gone. But it's really just put like a little rectangle around it. So the downside to that is if I start like talking with my hands and getting all excited, you creepy. Can see that there's not 
there's basically like a rectangle of green that's been inserted to kind of mask out this mic. Otherwise, you'd never know that that mic was there. It's a kind of a neat feature. Also, if your green screen is not big enough um, and the edge is kind of peeking in, um, and, you, and you can use that mask edges feature, or you can actually just use the zoom and pan and just kind of bring yourself in digitally. And now you can no and longer see that mic. Right below the green screen settings is the zoom pan settings. And you can set up a separate zoom pan for each um, scene and for each camera. So Glenn actually wanted to zoom me in. Um, he could do that as well. Oh yeah, I'm gonna pick, I'm gonna pick Ken here in camera effects. And then zoom yeah. you in. So this is a nice feature, like when you're doing an interview, if when you're doing a remote interview and um, you inevitably call the person and like your zoomed way in and their zoomed way out or something like that. So like you have like a, a situation where it's like, hi Ken, how are you doing? And Ken's tiny, I'm tiny. and I'm big. And like you could ask the person like, I'm so, like big important guest, can you get closer to your camera? Or like, um, or you're like zooming out and trying to match your heads and your heads are at different levels. Um, this digital zoom is very helpful because I can actually go kind of position Ken and then position me. And it looks a lot nicer. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily do an interview with us this close in general. <laughs> but having having us um, the same size and at the same height, there we go, can be very useful. I mean, it, it really makes it look a lot nicer, I think, to have the people's heads be the same size. We got a question coming in from Jason. He's wondering about the, that blur background effect. And he's asking if that requires a green screen. And the answer to that is, yeah, that's part of the green screen effect. So all that's really doing is it's taking the background image, which is a picture of a fake office, and applying a blur to it. That's not going to blur what's behind you uh, in real life like um, some apps are doing now. I think Skype has that. Blur uh, Zoom. Zoom has that too. Zoom I think. does, but neither yeah, one works very well. We never had good luck. It works if you're standing very still. If you start, if you wave Hi, at John. someone and then suddenly like, well, even the screen screen like, if I wave, no, actually this works pretty well. But you do kind of start seeing a little bit of like a uncanniness. But those are automatic blur background things that just makes everything go to hell. So thanks for joining us, everyone. Hi, John, Brian, Jason. Oh, so Eileen, another hotkey for you. Command Shift D, live demo mode. Live demo mode? Live demo mode. And that one's actually kind of important. People won't be able to see you going into the options menu to, to turn it on. All right, so that is, that's, our, that's a little, little bit more about green screen. The one last thing I want to show you with green screen is the transparent picture in picture. Because that is a super cool feature that I feel like is a little less discoverable than a lot of other features. Um, so if you go, so right now we're, we're just using camera mode, but there's two other major modes in Ecamm Live um, that you should know about. There is screen sharing mode and, and video playback mode. Um, so for example, if I wanna go to screen share, I wanna share, um, maybe I'm showing you my Ecamm Live sound levels. I know, super exciting. So cool. here we are, and here we are like in a box. Right, that's kind of the more like the standard way to kind of um, be on be on camera. So this could be like a, a slide demo, or this could be like a, um, some app that you're demoing. Now, since I have a green screen though, I can check this transparent picture in picture box, and instead of showing this um, picture of an office, it just makes it clear. So now I am oh, except for my little microphone. Let me do mask edges. So here I am kind of floating inside the sound levels. That so, looks so a cool. lot cleaner, a lot nicer. And if I wanted to reposition myself, it's basically just a matter of moving this picture in picture window around. So here I am kind of like, but typically you don't want to be too big or else you're going to be blocking um, what you're trying to demo. And here's another little shortcut for you. Um, if you're already in screen sharing mode and you click here, you're gonna get um, a little menu to pick what you want to share. It's the same menu. It's the same menu that comes up here. Um, if I click this button here, or also if you're in camera mode, 
And then I think you can like option click. Yeah, you can option click here and pick in advance what you want to share. So that way, if you don't have a scene set up and you say, oh, I want to share um, a specific thing, you can option click here and say, I want to show my comments and reactions. There we go. Now, I'm just sharing Ecamm Live Windows because that, that, that's the only thing I have on my desktop. <laughs> You could be sharing anything. You could be sharing a browser window. You could be sharing um, an app that you're demoing or um, something. Um, so, uh, speak louder, please. Someone's saying, "Can can Monica? Can you not hear us? Okay." You know what? I think my earbuds running out of batteries. <laughs> I can hear you just fine. But no, it's literally says one percent battery. Your green bars are coming up maybe 75%. Mm. You're definitely coming in louder than me. Hey, you just went away completely now. Can you hear me? Yeah. Wow, Apple's so cool. I was able to switch earbuds pretty seamlessly. To the other switched. ear? Yeah, I just switched my to the left to the right. And it didn't even drop the mic or anything. That's pretty darn cool. I'll bring Ken back here. Presumably, people can still hear you on the on the live. I see that. I see my um my mouth my audio levels going. So yeah, cool. I think we're good. Um, but yeah, that, that, that I'm I'm actually I'm glad that that Monica uh, mentioned our audio because that reminded me to check the battery level, and when I checked it, it, it said one percent battery <laughs> on this year. But that's why I haven't so really I think I had like two seconds left successfully use the wireless earbuds for um, a Skype or a live because they just don't last long enough to, for the call. That means you need to go and buy new ones. Don't you know how Apple works? <laughs> when something's battery doesn't work anymore, you have to go out and buy um, a new ones. iPhone, a new you Apple Watch, new ones, earbuds. You chuck it in the trash barrel and you buy a new pair. And meanwhile, a new version came out, which is hypothetically better. So, uh, so there are also in, third right? third party wireless earbuds that work a lot that work a lot longer, like the um, the Beats and stuff. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know much about those. Um, think about how small the battery is in the in that Apple earbud. It's about the size of a pencil lead, and about an inch long. It's amazing it lasts as long as it does. Yeah, yeah. I see. Actually, we got a question, which is which is um a really good one. Um, Juan is asking about sharing PowerPoint. I was just talking to someone about this today. And it is, it, this has always been like a little bit of a tricky thing because um, of course you can, you can share your screen, but what happens when you press play in like PowerPoint or Keynote or something, right? It takes over your entire screen. And then depending on what version of Keynote or PowerPoint you have or what, what settings you have, it will take over your screen to different varying degrees some of them completely um, getting in the way of your ability to control your live stream. Mm. So the answer to this question is um, yes, but it's going to take it can take some practice, and there's various ways to do it. Um, so uh, you can present. So one thing I can show you here is like in I'll go let demo demo mode here. If you um. If you're live in Ecamm Live and you switch out of Ecamm Live to another app, I'm just going to click on the desktop. This little handy control window just magically shows up. This, you're only going to see this when you're live or recording in record only mode. You can make it a little bit bigger, but it kind of has a maximum size. And it doesn't have all the Ecamm Live controls. It has scene switching, it has the basic modes, camera, screen share, and movie playback, and it has a finish button. Double clicking this, here's another shortcut alert for you. Double clicking this brings Ecamm Live back to the foreground. So this window is a way to control Ecamm Live or at least monitor Ecamm Live and switch scenes without having to actually be in the Ecamm Live app. You won't see everything. You're not gonna see your comments window anymore. Um, you won't get um, your overlays menu. You're not gonna see your sound levels. But this is a way if you had to go and use some other app to kind of keep tabs on Ecamm Live um, and switch scenes while you're at it. So um, say I wanted to do, I, I'll give a little PowerPoint presentation here. I love PowerPoint. 
ready. You have PowerPoint? I have PowerPoint. You're such a boss. I am the boss. I need PowerPoint. Here's PowerPoint. Oh, yeah, that's going to be awesome. So here's my first slide. I'll make a new slot head. Second slide. So how would you bring that in so that viewers could see it? Um. So here's what you can do. So let's, let's press play so you guys can see what happens when I press play. I totally know how to use this program. Slideshow. Play from start. OK, so I have two monitors connected. So this made it a little more complicated. Let me disconnect my other one. Okay, I'm going down to one monitor here. Okay, so this is this is a, this is a one monitor demo. So now I am in um, in PowerPoint, and you can see this little floating window is still above the slides, so you can still control Ecamm Live. So if I go back here to Ecamm Live and I and I go to screen sharing. I want to say I want to share PowerPoint, and I want, or I can just say entire screen, and I can want to say crop to fill because I want the, the they don't want that letterboxing on the sides. So now I have a scene that is my PowerPoint slides. So I'll turn off live demo mode here so you can see. Um, so now what I'm broadcasting is. Let me turn off these titles here. Move them over to the corner. What I what I what I have here is my PowerPoint slides. I can move through them. So now I'm in PowerPoint. And oh, why am I done there? So this is the control window. So what you're seeing now is my PowerPoint slides, and and us in the corner. So that that's basically like. Um, now we're presenting slides and that we're in the corner and we could even use um i could even use that green screen feature i talked about to green stream myself into the powerpoint slides cool so so why are those these... little controls what are those little controls down in the bottom corner those are powerpoints controls i don't know if there's any way to get the oh but this is something i should mention um they disappear had, when you take the mouse out. Yeah, I had to make a change here. I had to go in here. Can you guys see this? Um, Ken can't, but um, there's this little menu. Um, oh, and I, I had it. to pick. So you have to choose what you're, what you're basically like, um, how your cursor behaves during a slideshow. And the default was, I believe, hidden. And I, I picked um, arrow. And that makes it so that I can like interact with other programs during the slideshow. So basically, um, I can. Sh so this is what it looks like right now to me. You are you got um, the people in the audience would just see this. This is this is my little eCam Live mini window showing what everyone else sees. Now another useful thing for the um, use for this mini window is I can change scenes without you guys seeing it. So I can say I want to see uh, me. So now, wait, yeah, and or I can see what was that scene called? Hi. What was the scene with my um? I forget which scene that was. Yeah. So I take it out of live demo mode here, so you can see. So I'm in my slideshow right now. Now I'm like, hi, hi. This is my slides, and they cool. Slide, slide, slides. I can go through the slides with my arrow keys. Um, and now I'm sharing my screen. What's going to happen when my slideshow ends? Everyone's going to see my messy desktop, and they're going to see my um, that, that I'm in PowerPoint, blah, blah, blah. So before I leave my presentation, I can use this mini window to change um, scenes. And now that the audience can just see me, I can um, exit, my, exit my slideshow. Nobody saw me exit my slideshow. Um, they just see me. Same goes for starting the slideshow. 
you guys can just see me. I'm going to start my slideshow in, in PowerPoint. Now my slideshow is running. And now that it's running, I can now um, switch to my PowerPoint presentation. So what I'm, how I'm doing that is I'm switching scenes using that little floating window in the corner. Now, I probably made this look a lot, look pretty easy. It's, um, it's confusing, I'll admit, because you are, um, you are, your screen is getting taken over by PowerPoint. It's not always, always exactly perfectly clear what, um, what the audience is seeing. It can kind of mess with your head, like, wait, are they seeing this window? Are they seeing this window? But once you get the hang of it, and the key again is have your scene set up in advance. Um, you can you can put on a very nice smooth presentation um, without anyone seeing you um, poking around on, on in your app or anything like that, because you're able to kind of get that screen to get this presentation going. Um, then once it's going, switch over to screen sharing, switch cleanly back to the camera without any sort of interruption. So it's it's it it works great. It's just a little bit, it takes a little bit of, of wrapping your head around exactly what you're doing. Um, the same, these steps basically also apply to Keynote, except for one caveat that we've discovered recently. For whatever reason, if you have, um, if you have two monitors connected in, in Keynote and you hit present, it completely takes over your screen like much more to the extent that that little mini window I've been going on about does not appear to even show up. I'm not quite sure why. If you've got one display, it does show up. If you've got two displays, um, it it um, doesn't. And Keynote insists on taking over both displays. I don't know about a third one, but it there's, there doesn't seem to be any option to say, put my presentation on one display and put and just let me keep using my other display for something like Ecamm Live. Now, that would be super useful. For Keynote, I think you can do that. Let me try it. We've got a couple of questions coming in. Um... Someone, Shabaka, I hope I'm saying that right, is asking, using scenes, can I show slides created in Keynote? Um, the answer to that is yes. Um, very similar to what we just showed for for um, PowerPoint. Right, yeah, I, just, I was just kind of touching on that, the differences there. With, a one, with, a one, um, with one display connected, the steps are basically the same. Um, in Keynote, let me just quickly show you. Keynote here, I have that too. Um, in Keynote, I believe there is a, there is like a setting. Um, new document. Yeah, there's a setting in here. Um, these are Keynote settings. You go and you say um, slideshow settings. Show, this is important. Show pointer. Because if you don't if you don't show the pointer, then you're gonna not be able to control Ecamm Live, obviously, or anything. You'll be just trapped in your slides until it's done. So you want to do this interacting show pointer, and um, then you should be good. Um, if and like I said a minute ago, if you have two displays connected, um, it doesn't work so well um, to do this. Um, there are a bunch of workarounds to this. Um, we showed this, and I think we showed this in our last demo. Um, if you want to show slides and you you don't have any sort of multimedia in your slides, like movies or sound effects or animations, um, you could just export your slides as a PDF and just drag it in as an overlay and sort of circumvent all this screen sharing, um, mind bending confusion, um, just simply by you know arrowing bad. through a PDF. Like say I had a I think I have a slideshow here that I can. Um, Here's a slideshow that I gave earlier this month. I'm going to export this as a PDF. Export presentation in PDF, best image quality, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to call it Edgewood Talk. It's going to save it out. Oh, this is a big one. So here we are. Um, Edward Top PDF. Um, look what I'm doing. Is dragging this in. Hmm. So now I have this PDF that's just like a, as an overlay, 
And what makes this a little different than a regular image overlay is I have page controls. I can go to any page I want. I can actually use my arrow keys on my keyboard to move through this PDF. Cool. Um, and I don't need it to be over 10 space. I can enlarge it to fill my entire screen. I can bring in um, a picture in picture. So if I wanted to, and then I have to go into my settings and say, I can actually turn on picture in picture for camera mode. And, um, no, that's a square. If I right click on this, I can say show above overlays. That's another little hidden thing there. So now I can move, fill the ice cream with this and put the picture in picture in the corner. And now you are giving a slideshow. Hello, everybody. Here are some people in green vests getting so married. You're not using, um, you're not using your um, Keynote or PowerPoint at all. You're just using um, Ecamm Live and the ability to show PDFs. So it's a it's pretty simple. I could go in the screen sharing mode and then the picture in picture could have both of us in here. I could make it wide. So we got Pretty a question, cool. real easy question to answer here on the questions. Um, Monica is asking, can this be used in Periscope? Um, the answer is yes. Periscope is one of the platforms we support for live streaming too. So um, when you first open up Ecamm, you'll see a menu that says destination. The default will be Facebook, but you can switch that to YouTube, Periscope, Twitch, uh, Restream, or Switchboard. Did I get them all? I think that's all the integrations, yeah. Yeah, and, the and interesting thing about Periscope, Periscope's pretty simple to set up. There's no privacy settings. Your Periscope's always uh, going to be public to everybody. And um, you just click and you're live. Uh, it's pretty neat. Yeah, and you get the hearts and the, the comments coming through. Yeah, the hearts. Now, Periscope doesn't allow third-party apps like Ecamm Live to stream in vertical mode, tall oh, yeah, mode. Did they ever fix that? I don't think so. I think that they for some reason, turned off that ability. And so, so when you stream to Periscope, even though Ecamm does have a setting for tall mode, which works on Facebook, I know at least, it will not be available for Periscope. And um, I talked to them about this, and they said, well, we've, we've disabled that for, um, for some reason. They weren't clear on why. Hmm. No. That's weird. So another question about um, Shabaka wants to know more about the, um, the PDF option. I think, yeah, I would recommend um, at least trying it out because it is, it's a lot simpler than, um, than using Keynote or PowerPoint to do the presentation. You're basically just, you don't have to leave Ecamm Live, you're using your arrow keys to move through your slides. Um, so that is actually, um, would be a recommendation of mine. I, I, we have had some people that don't want to do this because they have, um, a PDF is not going to include all the um, sort of um, multi animations that might be in a presentation. Yeah, you might have. I know when I do a keynote presentation, I am very proud of my use of their built-in animations and transitions. So you have your bullet that. points flying over. Yeah, and you like zoom in. Like I like to zo make it zoom in for some emphasis. Like psh, blow everyone's mind. My amazing slideshow. But yeah, nice. so that. I'm glad we got to try that out because that is, like whenever I demo these things, I realize, like, oh yeah, there's that little checkbox you need to check or like, oh, well, don't forget about this little extra step. So um, there are, there, there are there, when you put it that way, some of these things are not, not um, as easy as maybe Ken and I think they are <laughs> until we try to demo it. Um, Monica was asking about how many people can be on the video at the same time. Ken, I think you can answer this one. How many people? I don't think that there's a limit. Um, on the Skype? Um, no, I think that you limit. can have... It, well, we know that we can Skype as... 
uh, lots of people. We've tried nine or ten, right? But I thought we limit the Skype guests to like. Uh, I don't think there's many? a limit. I don't think there's a limit. Okay. Um, yeah. So as far as as far as cameras, add, probably nine is going to be a good limit for like how many you can have on screen at a time. If you start adding cameras, like notice how we go into a to a two way split screen, and then if you added a third one, it go to a three way split screen. Um, once you do four, you're going to get like the four up, like four rectangles. I think I could even show you by calling my calling on the um, phone again. Join call. So it'll it'll work just in the same way that having multiple cameras connected to your Mac does, in that when you add them with the plus button, they will lay themselves out um, in a different different in a grid like that. Yeah. So here's four, here's four cameras. Um, what is a and fifth? Then once, and then nine is actually going to be three by three grid. Nice. And make sure that you have um, tried it in advance. <laughs> Let me add my phone. Hold on. Oh, I just hung up. No, that'll be too. Oh, wait. Oh, Ken. I did not do that right. There you are. No, Can I? Not? I don't know how to add someone to the call. Um. Another another quick, great question: the free account for Restream, can you stream in the Periscope Facebook profile page and YouTube as a simulcast? My my in, my first impulse is probably no, because the way Restream really set up their their free channel versus their paid, um, it really is set up so that like basically free is not does not really do much. <laughs> Do you, what Honestly, what are the like, what does what is the limitation? Like every Number, time I think, places. oh, you can do something with their restreams free plan, it's like, nope. I I feel like the paid account is required for any Facebook, but maybe maybe it's just Facebook pages and groups. You might be able to go to a, a Facebook profile. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Well, we should check. Don't, All right, so we're going. On we're doing note, a live live check here. On, on that I'm note, go line, into do, private mode. Do, do we um? Do we Sorry, support? No. Do we still? Are we still running that discount on Restream? Uh, I think there's still a coupon available. Yeah, we'll have to follow up on that. But we had a coupon for Restream. At least, um, maybe Katie can comment on that. Oh. Let me see if I can log out and log in is like um log out. I feel like I made a test account. Log in. Glenn test. Oh perfect. So this is a free account. <laughs> so this is the restream interface here you're looking oh. at. And um, I'm almost in. Never can watch me solve captures all day. I don't know why it's not letting me log in. Don't worry about it. We're coming up on three o'clock anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah yeah try out okay so my answer would be try it out. I think maybe what I was thinking of was. Um, they, they charge for any sort of definitely going out to like pages and groups. Um, they might let you do a free Facebook to your to your personal profile. Um, but you definitely can't do more than one Facebook. You can't do RTMP key. And um, there's a bunch of other things you need the, um, the paid version for. But if you can get by with that free one, that's pretty cool. Um, Jim, Jim has a really great suggestion um, to make a document a checklist um, for some of these things. So like, yeah, checklist for bringing on a guest. I feel like we have something like that. Katie will put it in the comments if we do. Um, or like a checklist of how to, um, to show. We do have tutorials for some of these things. Katie will link them down below. Um, 
Yeah, I think we do have a tutorial about how to bring in um, a slideshow. But I think um, and Adrian, I know, has done some videos about this kind of thing. And um, if you guys haven't checked it out yet, we have some great new tutorial videos online that Adrian Salisbury made for us. These are completely free and walk you through a lot of the features of Ecamm Live. And um, then on top of that, he's running a course for even more. Um, but there's a number of free videos we can link below where he walks you through doing it. And he's probably a lot better at that than us. Um, yeah, take a look at this. Um, this is our, um, our we, we, we rolled out a pretty new support site pretty recently, um, powered by Intercom. And if you go to this all tutorial video, so support.ecam.com, these are great. Like, look at all these wonderful videos there's like you know, like 15 or 16 of them and he takes you through feature by feature these are all free uh, for your enjoyment so if you these are re they're relatively new so if you haven't seen these definitely um definitely make some popcorn and watch this amazing video series so what do you think candy um anything else you want to talk about before we wrap up our our q a hour hmm I think uh, I I am I am cannot think of anything. All right. Well, everyone who's joined us today, and all of you people who are viewing this in the replay, thank you so much for check checking out Ecamm Live for for the for the for our um, awesome customers. Thanks so much for your support. Um, if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be able to uh, be developing this app. It is. It's a. It's a pleasure to have you as part of our Ecamm Live community. What do you. What do you. What do you think, Ken? Should we wrap it up? Yeah, you guys can continue to this discussion in the comments or on the on the Ecamm Live community page. Um, this video will be available there and also on YouTube, and Facebook. Yeah, and with and I'll, uh, I'm going to switch back to this intro scene here, and one that, and I also um. We get a lot of questions. How do you play music into the into the um, in your broadcast? Uh, we're working on adding a sound interface, but right now we have it in our Stream Deck plugin. So if you have an Elgato Stream Deck, there's a button to play sound, which I'm going to do right now for our outro. Uh, thanks everyone for joining us. Catch you next time on um, Q and A with Ken and Glenn.